Hi everybody! Today we are going to be making a stack of pumpkins. And one of the things that we're going to be doing is we're going to be showing different kinds of feelings with each pumpkin. The first thing that I am going to draw is the ground. So I'm going to make a line close to the bottom of my paper because I want to be able to have plenty of room for my pumpkins. Okay. The next thing that I am going to draw is my biggest pumpkin. Now, if you want to make it nice and fat, you can, but you can also make it a little bit more narrow. It's really up to you because pumpkins come in all different shapes and sizes. And you know what? I am going to make this one kind of big and lumpy, and I'm going to stop it at the ground line. And then I'm going to kind of make this big and lumpy. So my center of my pumpkin is kind of one of the lower spots because I'm also going to end up adding a stem coming out of it. But the next thing that I'm going to add to really add and make it look more like a pumpkin is a few ridge lines because I want it to look bumpy. So you should be doing this with pencil and then later you will trace this with a marker or with a black crayon maybe. So I'm just adding a couple of lines. I might add more later, but I want to be able to fit my face inside this space before I add more lines cutting through the shape. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of more pumpkins. Now some of them might be taller and skinny. They might be wide, kind of like this one is. It is really your choice as to what kind of shapes. And again, I'm making it stop here so that it looks like it's sitting on top of. We're going to be using a little bit of overlapping shapes. And then I, so right down here it's a little bit lower. I curve up and around and touch the pumpkin. So I have managed to fit one, two, three, four, five pumpkins on my paper. Depending on how tall or how short you've made your pumpkins, you might fit more or you might fit fewer. But I want you to notice that they're kind of teetering a little bit, like this one looks like it's crooked. So when I go to draw the face, I'm going to also make sure that I draw the face crooked as well a little bit. So now I'm going to go in on each pumpkin and I'm going to add those faces. So I want to think about different kinds of feelings. This one I think is going to be a little nervous because he's all the way at the top. So I'm going to draw two big eyes. His eyes are open wide because he's a little nervous and when you're nervous if you make a surprised face you'll notice that you're, you make your eyes a little bit bigger. And his mouth is going to be a big O because he's like, whoa, what is happening? And then I'm also going to add a stem. And I'm going to add some of those ridge lines now that I have the face because I'm not going to make the ridges go through the eyes because it would look kind of silly to have a line going through, but by adding those ridges on here, it makes it look more like a pumpkin. So I think that this one maybe is sad. So I'm going to make those eyes look like they are closed and a little frown and maybe a little cut out for the nose. And on this one I might not have room for a stem and that's all right but I am going to make sure that I fit some of those texture lines to make it look like this pumpkin is ridged. This one I think I'm going to make, he is feeling kind of silly. So he's going to be making a silly face. So 
He's going to be crossing his eyes, maybe. And he's going to be sticking out his tongue. Now, we know that pumpkins don't really have tongues or faces. But we also know that in October, a lot of people start carving their pumpkins, and so they might add faces onto them. So there's another face. This one I am going to make nice and happy. You'll notice that on a lot of mine, I'm using an oval because making the triangle eyes can be a little bit tricky, but if you think that you are up to the challenge, absolutely you can for sure make triangle eyes and then add in part of it but remember that a big part of this project is can you draw different kinds of emotions so you think about what your face looks like when you feel different ways Okay, so this one's going to get a nice big smile, and I'm going to add a triangle nose. And again, those pumpkin lines. And this guy down here, he is feeling a little frustrated because he's having to hold up all the weight of all of the other pumpkins. So I am going to make him feeling frustrated or a little, maybe a little angry. So for him, I'm going to draw some eyebrows and he's going to have angry eyebrows. And maybe his eyes are going to look like they're squinting a little bit because he is not happy. And he is going to have a frown. And if I want to, I can make that into a shape so I'd have something to color in after. And I'm going to add a little bit more of those ridge lines just to show, make it look a little bit more pumpkin-y. So now I have an angry or frustrated, a happy, a silly, a sad, and a <gasps> surprised pumpkin for my artwork. The next thing that I am going to do is I'm going to add a few details in the background just to fill this space a little bit more. I am going to add a moon in the distance, so I'm not going to make it huge, but I am going to add a moon. So what I do is I draw part of a circle and then I just go in and make a curve and it makes it look like a crescent moon. I could also add some stars if I wanted to, but I think what I am actually going to do is instead of making that star shape, I'm going to draw some circles. Because when I look up in the sky and I see stars, they don't necessarily have that star shape. They have more of a round circle shape. So I'm just going to add some circles so that when I color my sky, I would color around the circle and leave it white so that that way it shows up as a star. I can also add some, maybe some grass coming up over here or if I want anything else, I can add those details in now. So I might add some grass, little clump, that is growing next to these pumpkins. Maybe they've been sitting there for a while so we haven't been able to mow the lawn near them. So it just helps make it look a little bit more interesting. Once you have done all of your drawing in pencil, something that I really recommend for this particular project, just so that your lines show up a little bit better, is you can either use a black permanent marker like Miss Tuttle is using or you can use a regular like Crayola marker and just outline over 
your pumpkins so that you can see them a little bit better. Because when you color, if you color over your pencil lines, they might be light enough that you don't see them nearly as much. Once you have outlined so that you can see all of your lines, what you are going to do is you are going to start to color. As I start to color my pumpkins, one of the things that I want to point out, especially for my second graders um, and even some of my younger students if you want to try it, something that's great about crayon is that you can layer colors on top of other colors. So if I color one whole, and I'm going to use this one to show you, if I color one whole pumpkin fairly lightly so I'm not pressing down super hard but if I color around those eyes carefully and around the nose with a regular orange okay so I'm going to fill this whole thing up then what I can do is I can actually use a couple of other colors to make my pumpkin look more three-dimensional which is kind of a cool trick and it makes things look more realistic and people kind of wonder, oh, that looks really cool. How did you do that? And it's pretty easy. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab some yellow. And I'm going to say, you know, the light source is coming from the top. So we want the top to be a little bit lighter. And all I'm doing is I'm just coloring a little bit of yellow right over that orange. And you can see it just brightens it up a little bit. It does not take a lot and you don't need it to be a ton different, but you can just kind of brighten that up. Then, to add a shadow down below, because it would be shadowed where it kind of curves underneath, what you can do is you can use a red, or if you have a red-orange, kind of that in-between red and orange color, you can use either one will totally work. But if you just go in lightly, you don't want to go too crazy with the red because otherwise it will look more red and less orange. But do you see how just adding that little bit of red lightly at the bottom, so kind of right along the edge, and I am pulling it up a little bit where that curved line is, and then right along where it is kind of touching, then a little bit farther on the sides to show it's round, so I'm just adding a little bit of shadow and it makes it look a lot different than just if I was coloring it flat, plain orange. So that is really up to you if you wanna try it on one pumpkin. If you like it, do it on the rest. Call it kind of have it be a color experiment a little bit. But one of the things that is going to still be really important to me is that you are coloring carefully. So I should not see that you have scribbled over your eyes. You should be coloring around them because after I'm all done coloring in my pumpkins orange, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna add some yellow into the eyes and into the mouths to show that they are lit up like jack-o'-lanterns. So we have our pumpkins, when we draw a face on them, it turns it into a jack-o'-lantern. And each one of ours is showing a different emotion or a different feeling. So I am gonna continue coloring and I will check back in when I am all finished with my stack of pumpkins. I have finished coloring in my stack of pumpkins and each one of them has a different emotion or feeling on it. I also did go in and colored in my stars yellow, but I left my moon white. If you want to colors, color yours in yellow, that's absolutely fine. That's your choice as an artist. 
So I want you to notice that in the grass, I really did, I colored from the line that I drew for the ground all the way down to the bottom of my page. Then above that ground line, I colored all the way up for the sky. Then what I did was I added in my pumpkins. I started all of them with orange, and then I added that red orange and that yellow to keep that going. So it makes it look three-dimensional. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to see what you create, and I will see you next time. Bye, everyone.